Although we're so close to the main road, Notting Hill Gate and Bayswater Road, we don't hear any of the noise. We are quite quiet down here. Well, my name is Mrs Collings, and of course I'm a widow. I'm a housekeeper here, and I live down the basement here. It is a very old Victorian house, you know, quite high. And uh, in the morning I have to take the milk to the top, and there's just on a hundred stairs here. So you can bet I don't want to go up there too many times, but after I've taken one lot of milk up, somebody else might say, I wonder if I could have an extra pint today. And so, again, you have to go up. Of course, there's quite a few people pass through this house in the time that I've been here, but at the moment, we've got really quite a nice crowd in. For instance, there's this young chap in here. He's quite a nice young chap, David Hearn. He's a photographer. The only time that I do see him, really, apart from when he pays his rent, is if he wants to buy any props from me for his photography. And on the second floor, we've got her James Burley, again, quite a nice chap. He's a painter. And I can't sell him any props because he only used brushes and paints and they're not in my line. Only scrubbing brushes are in my line, not painting brushes. But again, he's quite nice. Well, here, Helen May lives here. She's a teacher of dancing. And today, she's given one of her rare performances. Of course, it wouldn't mean anything to you, it was before your time, but years ago, she was really a rather a famous person. But, of course, I wasn't living here then, I'm only living here now. Uh, we're getting near the top of the house now. Uh, Miss Croft lives here, she's a retired lady, but she lived in America for some time. She's not like me, I find the stairs a bit much, but she's used to them, I suppose, with the skyscrapers in America. Well, here we've got what we call, to well, I call them Tom and Lou when they're not here. They work in cellars. I live in one. Theirs is wine cellars that they work in, but not both in one cellar. Well, I've been living in this house seven years. I've been married two years in it. It's quite a good house. I like living here very much. The other people in this house are more bohemian than what uh, Lou and I are, and uh, we are more family type. And our, our place is decorated uh, just like the ordinary family house. And in all these other flats, there's not one of them have television. Although I like living in this house, it's a, it, it gets on your nerves having to have cold water every morning unless you boil a kettle. Well, my duties here is to provide hot water occasionally, of course, uh, answer the telephone, take a message. Uh, the telephone, rather, I think 12 o'clock at night is late enough for anyone to have telephone messages, so after that, uh, they're just unlucky. I usually take the receiver off. Of course, in a house like this, it's a hard matter to please everybody. You see, one will come to you and you'll say, well, can I have a party? You'll say, what do you call a party? Well, they say about 20 or 30 people. Well, wait just a minute, 20 or 30 people weigh about a tonne and a half. Our ceilings won't stand up to that. And I don't fancy a tonne and a half of people dropping on my head when I'm having my supper. Of course, then there's the brass to do here, you know, the handle and the letterbox and the keyhole, but not on a damp day because they don't look no better for doing them. They're black again at night time. Good morning, Mrs. Collins. Hello, Anne. What are you doing here today? I'm dancing at the theatre tonight with Miss May. Oh, are you? I hope you have a nice time. Thank you. Come in. You all ready, Anne? Yes, Miss May. Oh, Miss Harry. Where's your mother? She's at Ireland. Oh, well, then you'd better sleep here the night, dear. All right. Get into your moth things, will you, right away? Yes, Behind the screen. The moth dance was done as a sort of introduction to a big film that was very fashionable at the time called The White Moth, a sort of glamour picture with some glamour girl at the head. And at these movie houses, they used to give a prologue, they called it, where 
somebody was actually on the stage doing something to illustrate the picture in a way, you see. So I was dressed up in this white moth, fantastic cabaret sort of outfit, when a man in full evening dress stood by the proscenium arch and sang some sentimental ditty about little moth keep away from the flame. You're playing a dangerous game, you know, type of thing. Many hearts are breaking tonight, and it went on. Oh, it was a terrific you know, sob stuffy thing. And I flitted around as a moth the while, and then, of course, there's a large candelabra. Well, I suppose it was a sort of candle standing up, and I caught in that at the finish and then got sizzled up. That was the idea. Then we had the picture. I was taught by Pavlova. After Pavlova, I learned of Chiquetti because he was cheaper than Pavlova, and of course, very excellent. It was all in the days of the Russian Valley when they were at their height, you know. I was fond of dancing, that's what we boil it down to, not so much what I did with it. But I just wanted to dance, as long as I was dancing, it didn't matter whether I was paid for it or anyone watching me or not. People say, well, I'm still going on dancing, what about it? So I say, oh, I shan't stop till they're knocked on the head. Nearly ready. got to do, I always find time to go to the Portobello Road Market. It becomes quite a meeting place. There's the same people down there nearly every time looking for bargains. I bought a very nice cocktail cabinet down As a matter of fact, I bought nearly all my home down there one time and another, and my crockery. And it's amazing what you can find. For instance, a bird cage and a pretty willow pattern teapot, a cut glass bowl, and a lovely mantel clock, a chime, Westminster chime. At one of these times, I might even find a husband down there amongst the antiques, you never know. I've got a little dog. I call him the Dodger, but he's really the artful Dodger. He's very fond of sausages, so much so that he'll pinch them if I'm not looking, but only if I get them at one shop. I've noticed if I get them from another shop, he just won't touch them. You know, if a burglar was to break in and he happened to have some sausages from the same shop where I get mine, well, he could take everything within the house providing he give him the sausages. How's the rent of Twee getting on? OK, we've got 20 minutes. On the second floor, we've got her James Burley, again, quite a nice chap. He's a painter. Sometimes when I'm extremely busy painting, I can prevail upon some kind person to come in and help me out uh, and actually do the cooking so that I can just finish painting and then go and eat straight away. I've been here, I suppose, about uh, five years. It's a strange, romantic sort of house, and I feel all at home here. You know, one can get shut away from the rest of Bayswater, it seems. It's a slightly macabre house, but uh, I rather enjoy that. 
And I've got a sense of isolation, which I rather feel I need, and a sense of calm. And one's shut away and amongst one's own belongings, and one can create one's own world around that. That's what I enjoy about it, I think. One's fellow tenants one sees rarely, and just passing on the stairs, and one gives them just perhaps a nod or a word, but on the whole, contact is fairly rare, which is, again, pleasant, and these one in a pleasant state of isolation. In this road, I particularly like the rather exotic continental sort of flavour that it's got, with the stucco, Edwardian houses and trees in front, uh, and strange anonymous inhabitants moving about who one doesn't know, but one sees constantly and odd happenings going on, which doesn't concern one at all. One's own uh, activities concern nobody else. There's a pleasant sense of anonymity about it. I would certainly hate to live in absolutely new and modern premises. I feel the atmosphere would be completely wrong. The character of decayed grandeur is one that rather suits my temperament, I think. Got possibilities. Well, it's only the start. Hmm, pretty powerful pattern. Yes, but this is a lovely pattern. No, I don't need it now, love. I well, need look, the hip bath. I need it quickly. This will be for your photography to make your blackout. No, I need it now, really. You need it. No, I've seen it around oh, here somewhere. Oh, dear. Must it's you the have white it to one. die? Yes, please. Oh, dear. All right, never mind. Come along. I see if it's in the storeroom. I'm not sure it's there, but we'll see. Well, if it's anywhere, it would be under here. Anyway. Yeah, David, why didn't you have it when you saw it last time? That would have been the best thing. Or there's a bunch of things I might do for you. And, well, this will do for your photography. There's some dishes in the cupboard I'll do for you. Oh, it's cold, isn't it? Oh, um, all I want you to do is to go over, sit in the bath, and then the pictures are all going to be sort of semi-abstractly long legs, funny hands, almost fashion-y. Do you understand roughly what I want to do? Anyway, you sit there and I'll dictate and go. Okay, go. Right. Bless you. The main thing is to get the girl to completely relax. I don't know, it's just very simple. It's mainly just talking and getting on with the girl well, I suppose. OK, relax, relax. Now get your head back a little bit. Back a little bit further. A little bit further. That's it. Now get your hand up near your face. Near your face. I'm shooting in very, very close on your head now. Keep your hand near. That's it. Much better. The only reason I take pictures of girls is that um, I have to find some method in which I can earn enough money to live to take the photographs I want to take. So what happens is that I might take um, one set of pictures on a girl a month. This would be sold in America, and the returns I get from this one set of pictures would keep me for the rest of the month, and then I can do what I want to do. OK. What I really want to do is to use my camera in the same way as a writer might use a diary. I want to be able to shoot almost by instinct, hoping to bring in pictures my own feelings on the event that I see. That's it. Now get your head back a bit further, a bit further. That's better, much better, better. Bring your arm a little bit towards me, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. That's it. That's nice. That's nice. Now hold that. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it again. I'm going to be coming close to your head. I went to Hungary during the, the revolution and was in Budapest. I was greatly moved by this. It was probably the most interesting thing I, I've had to photograph. It, it seems a terrible thing to say, you know, that people fighting it is, is an interesting thing to photograph. But I did feel that this was something worthwhile. I felt that the pictures taken there were seen by millions of people in magazines, and, and that these pictures had a great use. Get your legs out long, long. That's it. Relax. Get those toes. Get A week isn't near the top of the house now. 
Uh, Miss Croft lives here. She's a retired lady, but she lived in America for some time. My birds wake me up in the morning. One morning, one of them was on the table. As much as to say, get up and give me my breakfast. And then I have to give them, get up and give them their breakfast before I have mine. Again at lunchtime they come, and now they come right in and feed off the table. I get a great kick out of them. I was in America 23 years. I went over with an American lady, and I was in the same family for 23 years. And we traveled quite a lot. I was a personal maid. A personal maid in America is so different to what it is over here. I had no work of any kind to do. I even had my own room and my own bed made. I did shopping and mostly traveling, packing and unpacking. A few years ago, I retired. When I came back to England, I was very homesick. In fact, I renewed my papers to go back. And then somehow, I got more settled and stayed in England. But I miss America still. I love New York. Yes, I love to go to the newsreel in Oxford Street. They have very nice travel logs there. And I have seen so many places that I have visited when I was in America on the travel log. If I'm feeling rather tired and I don't feel I want to go out, I can sit in my armchair by the window and see the world through my film view camera. I feel I am almost back in America. It's so real. <laughs> The last one. I like looking out, out of my window. I just uh, see the flowers, the uh, lawn beautifully kept, and one wouldn't know you were in London at all. You'd think you were in the country with a garden in front of you. I never get tired of it. I love it all. Oh, I don't want to leave here. I want to stay here as long as I can. I'll be quite content to end my days in this house. I like the old buildings best. Mm -hmm. Of course, I've got a little bit of garden there, and I don't have to go into a high park or even Kensington Gardens for that. That's my little bit, although there's only just a few toadstools and a little bit of deadly nightshade growing out there, but it'd be handy one of these times if ever I want to use it. I think I might take my goldfish out there. It'll make them a bit pleasant for them. They'll get a breath of fresh air. Anyone at home? Oh, it's you, Tom. I just come to pay the rent. Come on in. And I suppose you want to use your. Oh, thank you very much, Mrs. Crown. Sure. Here you are. There's your rent. Here's your change. That's three pounds. And there's eight and six there, like. All right? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, well, 
supposed to drink for you first. Thank you very much. Well, you've been down to Port Bella, have you? Yes. Oh, yeah, I've got something for Lou. Have you? Yes. Let's have a look at it, then. Wait a minute. Let me get me a drink first. Oh, this is nice. Look. Where do you get this? Lovely handbag. You don't ask questions. Oh, no, that's not Lou. What do you it's mean it's not Lou? Down. Look, if you put a pound note in this, you'll be ever so pleased You put with a it. pound note in it, and then I'll buy oh, it. Well, I want ten bucks for the bag. I'm no, looking for I a pound don't want that. I'll have anything else. Well, I've got a nice little vanity place here, if that'll do. Let's have a look at it. Oh, yeah, I think she'd, be, she'd like this. We had some girls living upstairs, and one got married. Anyway, McCarthy was asked. I didn't know McCarthy because he could play the piano accordion. Oh, yes. Where well, they went to church and had the wedding, and that was all right. They had a reception somewhere else. Anyway, they came home to our place, perhaps about 7 o'clock, I don't know the time, and they hadn't been home very long before I heard bombity, 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 bomb down the basement. Somebody yeah. went smack against my door, opened the door, a chap was rubbing his head. Oh. So anyway, we all ran up the stairs, the bride and the bride, not the bridegroom, he stopped downstairs, he was the sensible one. Everybody yeah. else went upstairs, and there's McCarthy fighting mad, punching everybody that went up, you know. I went up and I got my punch, but well, I wasn't going to stand for that. The next thing I heard, oh, McCarthy's been and thrown Josephine out the window. And when I looked on the floor, I thought it was two cushions lying on the floor. Instead of that, it was Mrs. Payne. No. She'd had a stroke and she died. Anyway, I came downstairs and I picked up the phone and I said, well, Mrs. Payne is upstairs, but I'm afraid she's dead. So I got a chair, stood on the mantelpiece and cut his throat. Stood on a chair? It stood on a chair. Anyway, there's blood still upstairs. You can see it when you go out. Anyway, when I went upstairs and saw him hanging over the chair, cut his throat, bleeding terribly. Yeah. Anyway, I phoned for the police, I phoned yeah. for the doctor and all. And uh, when they come, because the ambulance took him away and all, he killed himself anyway. <laughs> and she died. No. That was two in one day. No. Anyway, about three weeks before that, we'd had a woman here that had a fire. Have you seen the eyebrow pencil, Anne? It's here no, about okay. somewhere. Here just now. Don't worry, dear. You get on with your stuff. All right. <laughs> similar to one I did in Broadway in 1920 and it's the same dress
This is Anne, and she's going to do Victorian memories. on duty from six o'clock in the morning, I do think in the evening time I am entitled to some free time for myself. I just like to listen to the radio or to watch television or to read a book. And after 11 o'clock, I don't care even if they knock the house down, I wouldn't answer the door. Thank you. 